This video is um, the instructions for how to do part seven of our assessment. So here in part seven, we're going to state whether your driver is in danger and provide evidence that supports that. So first I'll need to look back at my situation from part one. So I see my situation here in part one. Hector is driving home on 280 South. Suddenly a car in front of him crashes into the barrier and stops 21.5 meters in front of his car. This is my situation for the example. Your situation is probably different. So you wanna work with whatever yours is, but we're looking at how far is the danger in front of your car. In this case, it's 21.5 meters. Then I'm gonna use parts five and six to answer the following questions. A, will your driver hit the danger in the road in their normal reaction time? Provide evidence to support your answer. Well, first I'm going to say how far the danger is in front of my driver. In this case, the car crash, 21.5 meters in front of the car. The danger is a car crash that is 21.5 meters in front of the car. I'm going to go check out my part five and see how far Hector traveled during his normal reaction time. So you can see here I, so I have my work. I actually made up this number for this example. So this is not the right number. I just made it up for the example here. So for the example, pretend I got my... Uh, my position was 19.7 meters. So this would be how far he traveled during his normal reaction time. So 19.7 meters. So the car crash was 21.5 meters in front of the car, and during the normal reaction time, he traveled 19.7 meters. So 19.7 meters is less than 21.5 meters. Hector did not hit the danger. That's how I'm going to fill this out here. B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say how far in front of the car was the crash or whatever the danger is. Okay. And then I'm going to say during his impaired or during their impaired reaction time, how far did Hector travel? So I'm not gonna fill that out for this example, but you can see that Hector traveled a certain distance. Then using the same sort of reasoning that I showed you here in part A, decide, did your driver hit the danger in the road with their impaired reaction time? So you'll need to fill out your response there. In part C, it asks us, does your chosen impairment make driving more dangerous? Remember your chosen impairment might have been driving while drunk, driving while high, while texting, or while on the phone. So part C is saying, does your chosen impairment make driving more dangerous? And you wanna look at parts A and B to find your evidence to support your answer. So um, here you would say, you know, my chosen impairment, Write what it is. Let's say does or does not make driving more dangerous. Evidence is you're going to let state what you found in parts A and B.
So again, that's part, this part A and this part B is going to be your evidence for your answer here in part C.